Retroactive jealousy sufferers tend to make a lot of critical mistakes when they're trying to work their way through this problem, when they're trying to make peace with their partner's past. In today's video, I'm going to get a little personal. I'm going to go back to my own experience of retroactive jealousy many, many years ago. I'm going to talk to you about the number one mistake that I made back when I was struggling with retroactive jealousy. My name is Zachary Stockhill, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world beat retroactive jealousy and save their relationships. If you'd like more information about my work or you'd like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. As I always say for the people here for the first time, the term retroactive jealousy refers to unwanted intrusive thoughts, often obsessive curiosity, and what I call mental movies about a partner's past relationships and or sexual history. And some of you watching this might not know that I am myself, in my personal life, a retroactive jealousy survivor. Back when I was in my kind of late teens, early 20s, I was the classic retroactive jealousy sufferer, and I struggled with retroactive jealousy at the extreme end of things. And you know, as I mentioned in my book, my first book, Overcoming Retroactive Jealousy, it truly was a living nightmare, it truly was hell. My then girlfriend's past was the first thing I thought of when I woke up in the morning having my coffee and the last thing I thought about when I went to bed at night. It was all consuming. You know, back then the internet was a much different place. I couldn't find any information really. Very, very, very little helpful information on this topic. You know, there's a reason that I own the domain name retroactivejealousy.com. It's because, again, in terms of retroactive jealousy and information on this topic, it was kind of a wasteland back then. But anyway, I once struggled with retroactive jealousy at the extreme end of things. And, you know, I made a lot of mistakes when, I, when it came to working my way or trying to work my way through this problem. And honestly, one of the mistakes I made was just talking to a couple of kind of clueless counselors who really didn't offer anything valuable, who judged me in a hurtful way, not helpful at all. I also did some of the social media stalking, you know, like trying to look up their exes on, on Facebook and just all that insanity, wasting hours at 3 a.m. trying to find her ex on Facebook and what does he look like and did he comment on this photo and what does that mean and you know, doing all that stuff. I made a lot of mistakes. But the number one mistake I made, bar none, was asking my partner endless questions about her past. And when I say asking my partner questions, that even that seems a little too delicate, you know, in terms of what I was actually doing. It was really a form of just constant like uh, interrogation, you know, getting all these minute details and what, you know, did you go here and did he do this and did you do that and how did you feel and why did you do it? And yeah, but that, that doesn't jive with something you told me earlier and are you lying and, you know, any retroactive jealousy sufferer watching this, or at least most of you, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about here. Just the endless questions where you get one answer and that leads to another question and then you get an answer to that question that leads to four more questions and that opens up another branch of inquiry and we kind of act like a detective sometimes. We think we're this hotshot detective that if we just ask enough questions, that will give us the peace and clarity that we need. But all retroactive jealousy sufferers eventually come to realize that the payoff that we get when we ask a question, and maybe we get an answer that we like, that payoff is short-lived. Now, not all retroactive jealousy sufferers do this, and frankly, you are the lucky ones. If you just found my work, if you're struggling with retroactive jealousy, and you haven't asked your partner 18,000 questions about their past, well done, because that's actually a really good thing. Because let me tell you, asking your partner 18,000 questions about their past will not solve retroactive jealousy. You can take it from me, you can take it from literally thousands of retroactive jealousy sufferers that I know, that I've spoken with, that I've emailed with, thousands of retroactive jealousy survivors who only started making progress toward fixing this problem when they committed to stop asking their partner questions about their past. And that's really the number one lesson that I want to stress in this video. You cannot solve retroactive jealousy by asking your partner 18,000 questions about their past. It doesn't work that way. And without fail, I get emails just about every day, usually from students in my online courses, especially my online course, Get Over Your Partner's Past Fast. Students are right to me who say, oh my God, Zach, I didn't want to do it. 
But thank you for that advice. I'm so glad I finally learned how to stop asking my partner questions about their past. Now, some of you might say, well, I can't stop. I can't help myself. I don't know how to stop. I understand that position. I understand feeling that way. But at the same time, I don't accept it. I don't entirely accept that excuse because you're an adult. And at the risk of offending some people, I think all of us need to work on a certain level of self-control. And I, speak, I can speak personally about this, as I just said. I needed to learn a new level of self-control when it came to this issue. And part of my learning that lesson came from the fact that I realized asking all these questions isn't actually solving my problem. Asking my then-girlfriend all kinds of questions about her past isn't actually leading to long-term peace of mind, which is really what I wanted. I really wanted long-term clarity and peace of mind, not just feeling better for an hour or for two days or whatever. I wanted to fix this thing long term. And you can only fix retroactive jealousy long term if you make a firm commitment to stop asking your partner questions about their past. There are many ways to learn how to stop asking your partner questions about their past. But honestly, I really think it all starts, number one, at the beginning, with a firm commitment to yourself to say, you know what, I'm done. I'm not going to create any more excuses. I'm not going to reason with myself and say, well, just I just have two more questions and I just have three more questions and it's fine. Like Once we have this conversation, then I'll stop because it doesn't work that way. You can't bargain your way out of this problem. So I think learning how to stop simply starts with making that commitment to say, you know what? I'm done. This isn't helping long term. This isn't going to fully solve my problem. I may get some answers that I like sometimes. I may get that reassurance. I may get that ego stroke that I want sometimes. But ultimately, this is not going to solve my problem. Solving retroactive jealousy, overcoming this problem goes deeper than that. If you are interested in how to start overcoming retroactive jealousy, I would recommend you sign up for my free four-part video mini course on how to do just that, on how to get started overcoming retroactive jealousy. Many thousands of people have found this free four-part mini course very helpful. You can unsubscribe anytime. There's no problem. It's totally free. There's no catch. Click the link at the top of the description in this video to receive the first free video delivered straight to your inbox. And for everyone else, or for you as well, <laughs> for everyone watching this, thanks for watching. I hope you appreciated this. If you did appreciate this, Please click the like button below. Please leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Please make sure you are subscribed to my channel to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.